officially good morning and welcome. This is morning time gentle yoga this week. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to start with a little bit of an elevation in the chest. Now there's a lot of different ways to do this. If you want a really big lift, you can use a couple of yoga blocks, one under your head and one under your upper back. And that's a really lovely way to start. I've been doing that for a couple of days. If you've got um, either like a yoga bolster like this, that's a pillow, or you have a throw pillow, you can turn this on the diagonal so that your shoulders go across the wider part. There's a little bit of support for your head and the tip kind of disappears down your spine. So that's a great way to get a little bit of a lift. What I'm gonna do today is use a blanket. And if you have a yoga strap, um, get that. If you don't have a yoga strap, you could use something like a scarf like this, or you can use a belt or a dog leash, anything that's got kind of some length to it. And dog leashes are nice because they have a loop and you can put your foot through the loop. Um, unless it's one of those retractable ones, that won't work. <laughs> but anything that's a little bit sturdy, um, you'll be able to use. So we'll do a couple of different moves with that um, as we go along today. So if you have one, go ahead and grab that. And here's just a little kind of side note. Um, it is very likely, you guys, even when we are able to go back out to gyms and practice yoga again, that we're not gonna be sharing yoga props for the next year or two, or maybe a little bit longer, depending on the um, trajectory of COVID and how things are going. So investing in some yoga props is probably a good idea because you'll be using them anytime you wanna practice, probably over the next year or two. If you're not sure of what kind of yoga props to buy, um, you can either leave me a comment um, down below and I'll um, help you through that. Um, or you can get with me offline um, or in any of my social medias, email me, any of those things. Um, and I'll um, chat you up about what props I use and give you some suggestions for where you can find props that fit your budget um, so that you can get your own. Um, there's, there's props out there for everybody. <laughs> So we'll make it work. All right, so this is a wool blanket, but you can use any kind of blanket as long as it has, um, uh, you know, it's not it's not so huge that it's hard to fold. Like a big, you know, king size quilt might be tricky, but <laughs> but anything that sort of fits a double bed or smaller will be a good idea. And then what I'm going to do with my blanket, so I folded it right now in half and half again in one more time, and then I'm going to fold it into thirds. So that, what I wind up with is a blanket that sort of looks like what are, what are called pranayama bolsters. And these are um, little bolsters that are made just for opening up um, the muscles that help us breathe. So I'm gonna lay that on the floor. And the way that I've positioned this is so that the folded edges of the blanket are going towards my um, spine, my uh, sacrum, my hips, and the loose ends of the blanket are up above my head because those won't really impact me, but this folded surface will. So I've got a little bit of a wrinkle here, so I'm gonna get that out because the wrinkle, even though it doesn't seem like a big deal right now, it's sort of like the princess and the pea story where at first she was perfectly comfortable and then after a bit she could tell there was a lentil in her bed. Well, maybe she didn't know what was in there, but she knew something was in there. In any case, fairy tales. <laughs> so that's gonna go around my low back, and then I'm gonna lie down. Now, I prefer the blanket to be um, just about like halfway down my low back. I don't like it to be right up against my sacrum. It doesn't always match the curve very well, but I like it to be um, so that my whole rib cage is supported. Now you can fiddle with it and see what one is, what's best for you. And then try to kind of find right in the center of your back. And then I'm gonna create just the tiniest little wrinkle so that my head is slightly um, higher and I can get my chin level there fairly easy. So if it's too high, my chin will, will has to stick up or um, tuck under. That's not enough, uh, that's not the right amount of support, but a little bit and still level in the chin, perfect. Now you can extend the legs all the way out like that. You can bring the feet to the floor 
so that you're in what's essentially constructive rest position. Okay? This is a really lovely way for the femur itself and to release the, hips, um, the hip flexors. And then the last option, you want a little more stretchiness, would be to come into this butterfly position with the feet together and the knees open. Now of the three, I'm liking the first two better. I'm gonna start with my legs extended. If that feels like it's pulling too much, then I will um, do the opposite. So, oh, we're gonna try to oh, <laughs> get my arms in a position. Now, if I bring my arms relatively close to my torso, such that it's basically just wherever anatomical position, like if I just extend the arm and let it fall, where that falls um, is pretty good. If and this goes deeper into my shoulder. If I take my arm bones up and then let them stretch out like a pair of wings, this pulls more in the chest muscles. So depending on where you're tight or experiencing tension, you might go for bigger in the chest or closer into the shoulder. And I've talked for a while and we've been laying here for a while, but we're gonna stay a couple more minutes. So I'm just gonna let ourselves relax what I like about this position is it helps reset the shoulder. So if I've been leaning over a desk or, um, you know, whatever job you might do, um, for me even just, um, I've had a habit since I was a kid of kind of rounding my shoulders and leaning over. So this position allows me to unwind that habit. And release deeply and then check in with your breath if you haven't already because sometimes while we're kind of fiddling with and positioning the body we forget about the breath but just come back to that deep rhythmic breath Let your um, rib cage and your navel expand with your inhales. We're going to do a few more of those here. Take two more big breaths. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna slip this blanket out from underneath us. So I'm gonna roll to the side, slip this guy out, and then come on back and just see what happened. So if you had blocks under you, it's much more dramatic effect for me anyway. When I have just the blanket, there's kind of a feeling of that blanket impression still being there, but mostly there's this very kind of soft and deep relaxation in my shoulder um, that it's easy to miss if I don't look for it. 
which could be that I'm making it up, but I, I don't think I am. <laughs> so I'm doing these little windshield wipers with my legs, with my feet kind of close together. So I'm in this little bridge position. I'm going to do two more like that. And you can join me if that seems like a plan. And then I'm going to widen my feet out a little bit. So I'm maybe about as wide as a regular yoga mat. So that now when I drop the knee in, there's a little bit more um, of a movement here with the pelvis. And then I'm going to take the knees and bring them into my chest. Oh, and give my low back a little massage action there. Now we're going to do a twist. So I'm going to keep um, oops, this blanket handy because I'm going to put my legs onto this folded blanket. So I'm going to go to my left first. And once I've dropped the legs over that way, I'm going to position this blanket so it feels like it supports my leg so that I can take this top leg, kind of drop it over the side. And then I'm going to really work on this stretch from this hip all the way up through this arm. Okay. So I'm going to pull my hip that way with the gra with gravity and kind of with all the muscles in my core. And I'm going to pull my arm this way, right on. So you're going to see how this works. Now you might need a bent elbow. That usually feels better to me. So now I've got to stretch through the pec and also through my hip as I'm trying to roll myself that direction and that direction simultaneously. Taking some deep breaths. So this is a lot spicier because I'm working at the more surface level muscles than I was in the last pose. The last pose we were trying to get into the deep stabilizing muscles. This is way more about the surface, the ones that are more responsible for actually moving our body rather than just stabilizing. So they're more interesting <laughs> in terms of the way we feel them and the perception that we have of the sensations of stretching. I'm going to do two more big breaths with this guy and draw in my legs a little bit more over if I've got the room. Last breath. And then I'm going to bring myself back to the center. And before I do the other side, I'm going to go back to those little windshield wipers. So feet about hips distance apart. And I can feel the difference in this arm and chest muscle. I'm also going to give that just a little bit of a rinse. And this is just mostly to reset my spine and my sacrum. So I'm going to take my legs out a little wider, about as wide as I think most yoga mats land, if that's a good landmark for you. The rounder yoga mats um, are harder. <laughs> they don't have the same landscape <laughs> um, ponent, um, points. All right, so I'm going to take my blanket to the opposite side. I'm also going to give myself a little bit of room here because I'm kind of close to the spine piece of furniture and I'm going to take the legs in, oh, give my back that little bit of massage right on the sacrum and then let the legs fall to the right. And again, I'm going to, oh, I'm going to go a little bit more this way. <laughs> I'm going to let this top leg drop over the side a little bit so that I can kind of use gravity to help pull me in that direction. And then I'm going to oh, adjust my arm bone. And I might need that elbow bent. It might be better to have it straight. And I'm just kind of rolling the shoulder toward the floor. And I'm rolling from my core. Right on. So I'm using the muscles oh, in the lower part of my back to turn my hip that way. And the muscles in the upper part of my torso to turn me this way. So that this, I'm getting this really solid twist in my spine. And I'm also getting this really lovely outer hip and chest muscle stretched down this diagonal. It's kind of nice. And you're just feeling it out for yourself to make sure it's an appropriate amount for you.
I'm going to do two more breaths. <laughs> and I'm just leaning into it just a little bit more for this last breath. And then we're going to come on back to the center. Oh, there's sunshine in my eyeball. <laughs> we're going to rock it back and forth a little bit. And again, I'm going to do this one where my feet are relatively close together. And then I'm going to widen it out and get a little bit bigger. All right. So that's what we're going to do on our back for now. But what you may want to do is give yourself one more little back massage. And then we're going to come on up to a seated position. It never hurts to have one more back massage. <laughs> Now, once you're seated, you can sit in any sort of um, reasonably comfortable position for you, whether that's a cross-legged sitting position or it is uh, one where your legs are a little more on the straight side, whichever way it's going to work. Now, one possibility that is really nice is to take that same folded blanket, if you still got it folded, and actually sit up on the edge of it. I'm going to use this under my knees in a second, so I'm not going to sit on it, but for some of us, Sitting up on the edge of the folded blanket is really lovely. So you're just going to find kind of a cross-legged position or the straight leg position or the elevated hips position. And then get your spine into what feels like neutral. We're not going to use oh, so much energy to hold it up because I want the shoulders to relax. But you just want to try to find that position where more or less your abs and your spine hold each other up. Okay? Then we're going to drop the chin and roll the head up and over one shoulder. Now my shoulder has a tendency to want to be super helpful, and it will do this. This is an exaggeration, but it lifts a tiny bit. So I'm going to try really hard to keep my shoulder relaxed on either side so that as I come over, there's not that kind of tendency to lift the shoulder. You may have to pay attention. <laughs> I do. So we're going to roll one side and then to the other side. We're going to go one more time through both sides. Now here's the thing. When you're moving one more time through both sides, feel all of the little stretches along the neck, right? Because we're going to come back to it. And I'm trying to notice which side feels a little tighter. And for me, it's the right side. So I'm going to start with that side. So now I'm coming back over to this left side. My head's on the left. This is the shoulder I'm stretching. Um, or the side of my neck that I'm stretching. And I'm just going to roll my head until I feel like, yep, that's the spot. So this is the first spot I'm going to work with, which is this little spot right here on the side of my neck. I'm turning my chin down a little bit because that helps me get up here in behind my ear. And then I'm going to drop this arm out to the side so it stretches a little more. Just the weight of my arm in gravity creates a little bit more stretch. I'm pausing and breathing there. This is intense. So I want to watch and monitor and see if it gets more intense, I'm going to back off. If it softens, I'm going to stay. I find sometimes just the teeniest little tiny movement pattern can be really helpful in releasing tension. So like that tiny little nod or shake of the head. And I'm coming around because I can feel how there's sort of a pattern of tension. So I'm going to come to the front and slowly wiggle my way back where I was. Good. So it feels a little lighter. So I'm going to bring my hand back to my um, thigh. I'm going to bring my head back to the center. And then I'm just going to pause right there for a second. So this shoulder feels a little lower than this shoulder. It probably isn't in reality, but it feels a little lower. And that's just a product of having stretched some muscle, right? Stretched some sensations. Some little tight places. Gotten some blood flow going. <laughs> so I'm inclined to do this other side. So we're going to drop the chin. And again, just for a moment, 
I'm going to kind of gently start to roll my head the other way. And I'm trying to feel on this side of my neck, where's the side that feels like there's the tightest spot. And for this side, it's more like right in this ropey muscle right on top. So I'm going to let this arm dangle and it's going to be more kind of in line there. So rather than feeling that muscle up in this part of my head like I did on the other side, I really feel it right here on the side. And again, it's a slightly different place, it's just that's where it's tight on the side. Don't be too aggressive with the pull, but give yourself permission to you know, find a little stretch. And if it softens, you can go look in again, see if there's a slightly different angle that would be better. back to my lap. I'm going to slowly bring my chin back to the center. And already it feels like my shoulders are a little closer to even. Now the body is asymmetrical. We may always feel one side's a little tighter than the other, but it's sort of nice to notice if it feels a little closer to even. So I'm going to let my arms kind of rest in my lap, but I'm going to roll the shoulders up, back, and down. And what we're trying to do is get movement in the shoulder blade. Okay, the arm bones are along for the right. So I'm going to sweep the shoulders as far forward as I can, as far up as I can, pull them back towards each other, and then bring them down my back. And so we're just trying to make the biggest possible pattern with the shoulders that we can. Bringing them forward, bringing them up, sweeping them back, pulling them down. Okay, two more like that. one. Okay, we're going to go the other direction. Bring them back up. So when you bring them over the top now, we're going to try to draw the shoulder blades as far forward as we can. As you sweep them around the back, pull them down as far as they'll go. Up and over, down and back. Good. Up and over, down and back. One more time. Up and over, down and back. All right, so we're done with the shoulders for now. We're gonna come back to those. So we're gonna take the legs out, give them a little shake. I'm gonna take this blanket and stick it underneath my knees. Oh, I like neck and shoulder work. <laughs> Feels really good. <laughs> so this guy is going under my knees. So there's a little bit of support on either side. Now, the straight leg has support because um, I tend to hyperextend my knee. So this protects my knee, and then the bent leg is gonna have a little bit of support, especially if I pull it up a little bit more under my thigh. So I've got one leg bent, one leg straight. You can bring your foot all the way up to your groin, or it can come all the way down to your ankle. Just anywhere along the inside of the leg is gonna be fine. And then we're I just leaned this way and pulled the sit bone back a little bit so that I'm sort of turned towards this long leg. So we're gonna fold over this leg, and then we're gonna come back about halfway and lengthen the spine. And then we're gonna fold over the leg. And then we're gonna come back about halfway, lengthen the spine. Okay, one more time, fold over this leg. And this is where you might stay. So if you can grab hold of your foot, awesome. If you can't grab hold of your foot, yoga straps make great lassos. So you can lasso your foot. And then you're gonna sort of push on the gas pedal with your foot turn the legs of the toes point up and keep as much length in your spine as you can as you fold here and breathe. Being invited a little bit further in, so I'm going to take that invitation and bring myself a little closer to my thigh. We're going to take about three more deep breaths. So last big breath, and then we're going to come all the way up. Now, I'm 
going to maintain the shape of my leg, but I'm going to give myself a little bit of a shimmy here on that first top leg. Now grab your yoga strap if you don't already have it. We're going to put it above our head. Now you can bring your hands so that they're right about shoulder distance, but they can be a little bit on the wider side. We're going to drop ourselves over to the long leg side. And essentially I'm going to try to keep this arm as straight as possible and let this arm bend and become heavy weight. And then see if I can get this kind of side bend with this little extra work in my shoulder. So I'm pushing that arm as straight as I can keep it. This arm is mostly weight. Little bend in my side. And don't go so far that it feels crunchy or funky. I'm taking one more big breath. Reach through that long straight arm. And then we're going to come all the way back up. Now we're going to see if we can bring the arms around behind us. And then hopefully I won't run into the plant. So then we're going to come all the way up and over. Now in order for me to do this, I have to have a really wide position. You might be able to keep your arms a little closer together. Coming around. And oh, I'm going to try to keep my elbows straight, but it's not easy, y'all. <laughs> so coming around. Elbows as straight as you can keep them. Coming around. Coming back for whatever reason is way harder for me. One more time, as straight as you can keep the elbows, and then oh, push that arm out there as straight as you can. And then we're gonna release. Oh, 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 oh. oh, don't worry, we get to do that again on the other side. I'm excited. Are you excited? <laughs> so, woo! <laughs> Straighten out your leg that was bent. Give that guy a whirl and then bend the opposite leg. Okay, so now I've got to move that sit bone back a little bit. So it sort of feels like, again, it kind of turns me over the long leg. And we're gonna do this in these three little pulses. So I'm gonna fold over the leg, lengthen my spine about halfway up. Good, and then fold over the leg, come up about halfway up and lengthen my spine, and then fold over the leg, and now I'm gonna go for it. So if your strap has a loop, you can certainly use the loop or you can just put the strap around your foot. And so again, I'm gonna turn this leg on. So I wanna use my inner thigh so my toes point up. I've got this blanket under my knee so I can bend my knee a little bit and protect the back of my knee. <laughs> I'm putting a little more pressure on my stomach now. So I'm lengthening out from the breastbone, trying to get as long as possible, see if I can squish in a little bit more. And then I'm gonna let my head get nice and relaxed, neck relaxed, as I hold the shape and breathe. Mm. Now me and my hamstrings gotta be getting along, so if it feels like you're tearing your hamstring from your butt bone, back off a little bit, y'all. <laughs> Bend your knee a little bit or come up a little higher. There's no reason for you to do those kinds of crazy things. Now just breathe. Two more breaths, maybe three. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna take a big inhale. I'm gonna come all the way up. Give myself a little rinse. Okay, so however you can hold it. Now this is gonna be the straight arm. So if for whatever reason, maybe you've got some arthritis in your hand or there's some other issue, you can hook this, the loop of your strap around the wrist. This is one of the reasons I love a yoga strap that has a buckle that you can adjust. There are these really interesting yoga straps that have loops built in and those are cool too. So you can, like this is the arm that we're gonna hold straight. So that can be more around your wrist and you don't have to hold onto it as tight. And then this guy you can wrap around the wrist so that you can use the weight of the arm, okay? So we're gonna keep this guy as straight as possible. We're gonna let this guy become the weight that's kind of helping to pull us over and create this shoulder stretch. Reach through this arm, and you can hold onto it with your hand if that's a little bit better, like if it feels better to hold. Cool, hold. I've got some thumb issues sometimes with this hand, so sometimes I like to take the pressure out. Oh. And just two more breaths here, yogis. You're doing great. <laughs> all 
way back up. Oh, hello. <laughs> Again, my arms are going to need to be kind of wide so I can come all the way back and around. And then I'm going to fight to keep my arms straight as I come back up and over my head as best I can. Fighting to keep my arms straight, usually for me going backwards is not so crazy. But oh, coming forward, my elbows want to bend. Hello. Coming up and over. Oh. And oh, fighting to keep those arms straight. Okay. I'm gonna do it two more times, coming up and over. Oh, oh, oh I'm running into the cabinet, hold on. <laughs> Fighting to keep my arms straight all the way back. And last one, up and over. Ooh. And then, ooh. fight to keep that straight. Oh. All right, yogis, we're setting this guy off to the side for now. Oh, we'll come back to that later. But what we're gonna do first, <laughs> I'm sure I rinse out my shoulders as we're going to come up to all fours. Now, if you like and you want a little extra support or padding under your knees, you can open your blanket and put that under your legs. I'm just going to set this off to the side because I am on a very carpeted surface. <laughs> so my knees are generally okay. So we're going to come up to all fours. And then once you get here, position your arms so that they're appropriate and comfortable. Again, sometimes you have some arthritis or some wrist issues or other things. So this is where yoga blocks can come in handy for folks that have those issues. If I take two blocks and position them so that they're shoulder distance apart for me and put my elbows on the blocks, then I can do these cat shapes like that without having to have my wrists on the floor. And this can be very useful on those days where your wrists are just tender or for anybody that kind of has chronically, um, chronic wrist problems. Oh. Kind of broadening the chest and kind of let the upper back fall in a little bit because it normally wants to curve out and that's the way it's built. <laughs> so we're not trying to change that per se, but we're trying to move all the muscles and the shoulder blades in relationship to the spine, okay? So it feels like we're flattening the upper back. What we're really doing is moving the shoulder blades. And then we're gonna round, and this time we really are moving the back a little bit, but we're tilting it from the pelvis. So we're gonna tuck the pelvis under and get that low back as rounded in that area as we can so that those muscles get a chance to stretch. And then one more time, we're gonna try to let this upper back, and I'm really letting my shoulder blades come up in the air, okay? because I want to get some movement in the muscle between my shoulder blades and upper back. And then I'm going to move this lower back again. And I'm pushing into the block so that I can get this shape in my back. Right, so the blocks don't take anything away from the practice, except for the wrist pain, <laughs> which, you know, I don't know about you, but that feels kind of good to me. So we are going to take ourselves into a child's pose, um, and then we're going to make it a little bit more of a... Um, it's called puppy dog, but it's, it can be a little bit more intense. So we're gonna sit, stick the hips back as far as they'll go and just see if you can bring your forehead to the ground. And if this works out okay, awesome. Now I've got my knees kind of close together. You can take them out wider if you like. It does make it a little easier to breathe when the legs are wider apart because there's not as much compression in the belly. But this is gonna be the right position for me for later, so that's why I'm staying a little tight. And we're gonna take one more breath here. And essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to keep the elbows shoulder distance apart, and we're just gonna bring the hips up over the edge of the knees and see if we can get the chest to come all the way to the ground with this kind of feeling of stretch in the upper back and shoulder area, okay? So you can put your palms together, you can grab the edge of your yoga mat, you can plant your hands on the floor, whichever is gonna be better. And this can be quite intense for some of us. So if you need to back off, back, back off to towards that child's pose. You can come forward a little bit more, come forward a little bit more. Two more breaths. Now 
we're going to come all the way forward into a sphinx. Now, oh, oh that one's intense sometimes for me. Um, <laughs> it's a good pose, but it really does ask a lot of my upper back um, to move in the way that it doesn't like. It likes to round over the phone, <laughs> round over the tablet, round over the laptop. So to ask it to go the other way is kind of unusual, but it's nice in the end. It just is really weird while I'm doing it. Okay, so now I'm in a sphinx. My elbows are a little forward of my shoulders, a little bit closer together than shoulder distance, and I'm just pausing here. Now, we're gonna lift the legs in a moment, but first, we're just gonna tuck the toes under, just see if you can lengthen back your legs a little bit, and then pause for a little bit longer. I'm just taking a couple breaths here. more passive um, version of this. So I'm going to now bring my chin or my forehead to the floor and we're going to work with the legs in a more active fashion. So I'm going to lift my right leg up as high as I can lift it without rolling my hip. So not like this where I've rolled my hip, but just trying to lift the leg and then bring it back down and then just the left leg and bring it back down. So we're going to lift each leg one in turn, right leg, reach out through it, bring it down, left leg, reach out through it, bring it down, right leg, reach out through it, down, left, reach, down, right, reach, down, left, reach, can you feel those muscles in your backside doing that work, last round, reach, and down, left side, reach, and down. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> so that really energizes the legs. Now we're going to do the upper back part. So energizing the legs like we were just doing, except pressing them into the ground now. Palms about level with your shoulders. Inhale, lift yourself off the floor, not by pushing with the hands. That looks like this. But instead, lifting with the back muscles and the legs so that the hands are here for support. And I can draw my elbows back. But, ooh, I'm doing that work with my back muscles. Okay. Slide your hands back about an inch, and then we're going to lift again, press the palms into the floor, draw the elbows back. Use your back muscles to get yourself up, not your hands. Now, your hands can help stabilize you once you're there, but lift with your own <laughs> core support here. So I slid my hands back one more inch, and then I'm lifting, using all that core support that I've got, drawing my elbows back, and then come on back down. Nice, yogis. Now, we're going to come to a kneeling position again. You can go back to child's pose for a moment. You can go to downward dog right away. I'm gonna do a little bit of child's pose and then a little bit of downward dog. So I'm just gonna come back and give it a little wobble. Oh. Now if, dad, if down dog is not your jam, if having your head below your hips is not appropriate for you, then come to that um, all fours position instead. If downward dog is good, we're just using it as a transition so you can pause for a moment oh. and take a little time with it. So shoulders, or hands about shoulder distance apart, and then move your shoulders around a little bit. Try to feel what it's like to connect to the shoulders to the upper back nice and firm. And then walk your heels up and down. I'm a little slippery today. Oh. And I'm gonna press my heels down and lift through my hips and try to pull the weight away from my hands. And then I'm going to walk my hands and feet together, okay? So once you're on your feet, we're going to pause right here and give ourselves a little just kind of back and forth shimmy. So I'm just kind of circling my hips, Ooh, making kind of a figure eight maybe, and letting my upper body hang. If it's better, you can put your elbows on your thighs so your head's not hanging so low and do that. Still feels kind of nice to circle the legs. Okay, so we're going to come up halfway and then all the way to standing. And give yourself a really big stretch. <laughs> Alright, we're going to start with some standing balance poses. I'm going to face you guys. And you may not be able to see the top of my head. It's possible I'm off your screen. But in any case, we'll get there together. 
try to fix my wardrobe here so it's not driving me crazy. And then <laughs> I won't have so much to distract me from balancing. So we're first we're gonna find a mountain pose. So we're gonna lift up onto the tiptoes and come back onto the heels a couple times. You don't have to go really far up onto your tiptoes. Just feel the feet rock. Spread out your toes. And with the feet about hips distance apart, we're gonna press the big toes and the little toes into the floor and see if we can keep the three toes in the center lifting. Now that might be ridiculous, but it's just, just try, right? Even if you don't succeed at it. <laughs> see if you can feel how there's an arch that lives between the pinky toe and the big toe across the ball mound of the foot. That's really what we're after, is trying to feel that little arch. So put all your toes back down, and then as you can, can you feel yourself kind of lifting from the outside edge of the foot and the inside edge of the foot simultaneously so you feel the ball mound of the foot and the heel and the arches in between those two places. And so the foot has three different arches. Those three different arches are designed to help our um, feet be really resilient, but a lot of us don't experience these arches in our feet because we either lose them or they were always a little bit on the lower side. So be it, some people have really high arches and it's hard to feel the feet really grounded, right? So we all have our own things. Now you're gonna shift the weight into your right leg and we're gonna bring the left leg into a tree pose. Now basically, wherever you put your foot in that sit seated pose is about where you want your foot here too. Just be mindful of your knee. And your balance may be a little wobbly today, that's okay. You can keep your hands a little lower if that helps. Sometimes, for some people, taking the arms out wide helps. So you can try that. <laughs> that never works for me, <laughs> but it might work for you. Good, so take a nice big breath. And then we're gonna stick, take that left foot back down and pause for a moment back into that mountain shape and see if you can feel the difference between your two legs. And sometimes I have a really strong urge to shake that leg up <laughs> that I was just standing on, so you can do that. And then we're gonna shift the weight into this left leg and again, try to find those three arches of your foot. Feel nice and secure, almost like those arches are lifting you and creating buoyancy and lightness. And then bring yourself to that tree pose on the other side. And again, your foot can be higher, you can grab your ankle and bring it all the way up onto your thigh if you like. What really matters is that we're just practicing balance, not really where the foot lands. <laughs> Put it where it's best for you. Press the legs a little bit together. Create a little more structure with your core. If you're wobbly, you're wobbly. You'll be fine. <laughs> Just catch. We're going to take one more breath. And we're going to come back to this mountain pose. And again, for a second, resist the urge to shake your leg. Just feel, right? Feel the sensation. Does it go all the way up to your hip? Does it go all the way up to your shoulder? Is it mostly centered in your leg and your hip and your butt cheek? And then go ahead and shake it out if you like. <laughs> now we're going to come back to that strap and you might again, especially if you have, there are these really great straps and you can get them on Amazon if you don't want to order directly from the company, but they're called infinity straps. And basically what they have is two loops that are a little, and they're a little bit stretchy. And if you have one of those, you can put one hand in each loop. Now for me, this strap is going to be just fine. I'm just going to use the length of it. So I'm going to put it behind my back like that. So I'm holding on to it. And again, you can put your hand through the loop. if You want to avoid the um, knuckles or the thumb for some reason. And then we're going to take the legs out kind of wide. Now you can bend your knees. You can have your feet turned all the way forward or a little bit out to the edge. We're going to fold forward from the hips. And then we're going to see if we can let the arms come up over the shoulder a bit. And you can bend at the elbow if it's helpful. You might need a little extra room. <laughs> See if you can allow yourself to hang. Now, again, you can keep yourself a little more level here if it's not okay to hang all the way upside down. And I can tell which shoulder is tighter <laughs> just by feeling the way this stretch impacts me. And again, I'm not going for anything that feels really sharp or shooting. A little bit unusual is fine. I'm rolling my shoulder blades back and forth over the top of my shoulder. Take them one more big breath. And then we're gonna release the arms and give them a little shake. Oh. And then we're gonna come up halfway. Ooh. And if you can, 
we're gonna come into a squat. Now it could be just a little tiny bit of a squat. It could be that you're allowed to let your hips come down below your knees. I don't know if that's gonna work out or not. <laughs> and some people can sit straight down onto the floor from their squat. I cannot. So I will come back to a straighter leg, put one knee on the ground, and then the other, and then sit down. So however you get there is good. <laughs> now we're gonna return to our back, and we're gonna do a couple of stretches for our hip with the strap. I love these stretches, so I like to do them whenever possible. So if you have your strap, and then you can go ahead and get anything you want for your final relaxation. Do you want a blanket to put under your head? Do you want something to put under your legs? Get all those things and stick them off to the side, whether you've got some throw pillows or some other stuff, whatever you need. And then we're gonna lie down. And once I get there, I'm gonna come back to that thing we did at the very beginning where I'm gonna put my feet hips distance apart and windshield wiper them back and forth. And then I'm gonna wiggle them out like one width and windshield wiper them back and forth. And then wiggle them out to about as wide as the mat and windshield wiper them back and forth. Now, I'm gonna scoot this way a little bit and it's possible that I will go a little bit off your frame, but hopefully we can do this together. I need a little bit more room. Now, pick a leg. Are you gonna do your right leg first or your left leg first? So I'm gonna do my right leg first. So I'm gonna take a pillow and put it under my left leg because I'm gonna let that leg stay super relaxed. And then I'm gonna bring the right leg in and give it a hug. Now, if you can't hug your leg like this, don't worry about that. Just bring it in as close as it'll get to you, okay? You can put your hand on it or not. And then we're gonna spin the foot around in circles. Oh, it feels nice. If you need your head elevated, put a blanket under your head so you've got a little bit more support. Go the other direction. Some people get a little bit of vertigo or something like that when they lay down, so putting a little support under your head might be good for that. And then point and flex your foot. You're spreading out the toes, trying to get some space in the little bones between the toes and the heel. Oh. All right, so now you could theoretically grab hold of your big toe with your peace sign fingers and extend that leg out. And that might work out for you. <laughs> I like the strap a little bit better because it gives me a little bit more room. So I put the strap around the foot the foot in a position so that the strap is kind of on the ball of my foot and then as I hold on to the strap I can push my heel up and pull my toes down and get into the spot where I'm really tight on my legs and that's the calf muscles and you might want your knee a little bit more bent or a little bit straighter leg so we're gonna stay here for about another minute oh, just breathe in Again, you can play with the stretch. You could do like a little bit of a pivot. Okay. It's just a little bit longer. We got about two more deep breaths. All right, now this is where things might come in handy. So I'm gonna take this blanket that I had for earlier. I'm gonna put this right up underneath my hip and then we're gonna take the leg out to the side. So by putting the blanket really tucked in, so it's almost underneath me, it provides just a little bit of support there for this leg, so I don't go too far with this stretch in my inner thigh and groin. <laughs> I find this area is quite sensitive, and I don't need to tear it <laughs> or cause trouble. So having this little stretch, but having that support there for me is better. And you might put a block under your thigh or anything, anything you've got that will provide support. Quite often, a blanket or a rolled up towel for me is the best. Um, it's not very big, right? So if I want more support, I'll do a pillow. But it's, I can tuck it in, so it works pretty nicely. And again,
again, you can bend the knee here, extend out through the heel, pull the toes back, point the toes. I don't have as much room to rotate, but I've got a little bit. You could rotate a little more up or a little more down. We're going to stay for about 30 more seconds. You're doing great. Now take a really big breath. We're gonna bring this leg back. But we're gonna do something that is just a little bit different. So last time we really went for this really big twist. This time we're gonna mostly try to stay focused right here in this outer hip. So I'm just gonna let the leg come across, but I'm gonna try to hold my hip nice and stable, and I'm gonna push into this heel as best I can. So I'm lowering my hip and bringing my leg across. This is an adduction of the hip. And so it hits a little different kind of muscle here than we might be getting from our twist. So it's nice. And I like the twisty one too. Sometimes I do that one because I love it so much. But this one is a nice alternative if we've already done that. So pressing my hip down and into the floor and then pushing out through my foot. Notice if you're gathering tension around your face, see if you can keep that soft. Pressing down through that hip a little bit more. And I'm going to stay for about 30 more seconds, y'all. We're doing great. Take a big breath. And then we're coming back to the center. Release this leg. And give it a little shimmy. Now I'm going to put this pillow under that leg and relax both legs. And just see, do you feel a difference in this hip versus this one? This leg versus this one? Oh, I always feel a difference. And usually it's really pleasant. <laughs> so before we get the strap all, um, uh, out again, we're gonna bring this leg in and give it a hug. And then hugging it in, we're gonna spin the foot. And again, you don't have to hold on to the leg to hug it in. You can hug it in just using the muscles of your quads. Spin your foot the other direction. point and flex and again I'm going to kind of squish together my toes and spread them apart so I'm also trying to get a little bit of that sense of movement going in my foot. Again, I'm letting the right side stay nice and um, relaxed, and the left side I'm exploring through this little range of motion, pressing the heel away and pulling the toes down for me because that's those calf muscles are where it's at. <laughs> but for you, it might be you want this to be a little more in the hamstrings, so you let the toes point. You can bend the knee, straighten it a few times just to have that little kind of pulsation of pose. As long as you're really paying attention and moving in a slow, gentle way, you probably won't get in trouble. If you move too rapidly, sometimes that can cause trouble, right? You might wind up um, tearing something. 
So just be mindful of how you move and how you pay attention. We're going to stay here for a little bit longer, about two more big breaths, maybe three. Just tucking my blanket in. <laughs> so I'm ready for the other side. Take one more big inhale. And then with the exhale, we're going out to the side. And again, you might have added that little extra bit of support. You might bend your knee a little bit or straighten the leg along the way here. Just feeling out the right amount of support for you. I'm letting my right side get kind of heavy, so it helps hold my left side steady. seconds yogis you're doing great just feeling and noticing those little sensations as I make these tiny little micro changes to my pose take one more big breath and this is the one where we're gonna see if we can come just a little bit across so we're gonna keep the hip stable just see how far across your leg will go before your hip picks up off the floor, okay? That's about where you want to be. And then press into the strap a little bit as you give it a little bit of resistance. And so again, we're trying to get to these kind of adductor muscles that help pull the leg towards the center. And while we're engaging those to bring the leg across, we're stretching their antagonists, which are the, mostly this outer hip. <laughs> which feels really good. Breathe in. We're almost there, yogis. Wherever there is, we're almost the way, <laughs> we're almost done with this stretch. How's that? We got just barely over 30 seconds left. You might feel this in your IT band. You might feel this in your outer hamstring. Oh, hi. <laughs> you scared me. <laughs> it might be all your outer hip. <laughs> Somebody's little whiskers might have tickled your arm. <laughs> We're going to take a nice two more deep breaths. <laughs> Last one. And then we're coming back. Oh, release your leg. You can set that strap way off to the side and oh, rinse out your leg. And again, I have this pillow here. I'm going to leave that pillow right where it is and just extend my legs, give them a little shimmy. And then I'm going to use this blanket, just the tip of it, just one little fold of this blanket under my head. You might need more support in order to make your um, head feel like it's level, okay? So what we're going for is it doesn't feel like the chin is tilting up or it's crunching into the breastbone. Just so that it's pretty close to what the level would be. And then I like this feeling of kind of cupping the back of my skull with that soft surface. Now you can use your yoga mat or you can use a blanket. If you don't have a blanket, yoga mat works great. Just fold it up and kind of cup the surface of your yoga mat up against the back of your skull. Now, there's some very, <laughs> very big nerve pathways that run out of the back of the brain there. And for whatever reason, it does seem to make a difference if the skull feels supported, right, to the nervous system. So your nervous system is more likely to relax if it feels like you've got a nice sort of neutral position and a little bit of support on the back of your head. See if it works for you. I mean, it maybe just works for me. Then we're gonna unwind the eyes, let all the muscles around your eyes get softer, especially right here between the eyebrows and right around the temples and the outside edge of the eye. 
soften all of that. Soften your lips and your jaw. And let the teeth part just a little bit. Let your tongue find a kind of natural place to live in your mouth. Yogis, you're going to take a moment and just notice that your body is breathing. Now, when you're ready, and the next inhale drops in, take that breath in so deep you can feel it to your toe tips. Go with a sigh. Oh. You open your eyes if you're ready, or you can leave them closed a little longer and just wiggle your fingers and toes. Stretch those out. Give your wristed ankles a little movement. Stretch out your whole body. Oh. And then we're going to just roll ourselves over. Eventually, we're going to come up to a seated position. <laughs> I like to take a moment on my side. It feels like the thing to do. <laughs> so when you're ready, you're going to prop yourself up. And then we're going to take ourselves off to do whatever we're going to do for the rest of our day. Let's take a big breath together. Nice big inhale. And a big deep sigh. Enjoy the rest of your day, yogis. Namaste. Thanks for practicing with me today.